After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the photographic chemistry, application of photography to different crime scenes, photographic specific crime scenes, Today, a digital camera or mobile phone, etc., has revolutionized our thought and made it most convenient for us to take a picture of any person, accident or crime site or any other special situation, which we, went, we, which we want to record in a better way and quality of photography is much better than the earlier. The same image or picture can be uploaded on the net website and can be shared with our friends in just a moment. But when photography started, it is used to spend hours and a lot of money to take a photograph without any guarantee of good quality, which would come out very blurred. In photographic chemistry, the photographic film and paper was treated with chemicals after exposing them to light to produce a negative and positive image. This chemical processing transformed the latent image into a permanent visible image. Practical photography chemistry was first de devised in 1830 by Louis Jacques Munde, Daguerre of France and by William Henry Fox Talbot of England. According to a method of doggery, a silver iodide coated silver plate was exposed to a light in a camera which decomposed the exposed silver iodide to metallic silver and iodine. A clear permanent image was obtained by treating the plate with vapors of mercury that is by amalgamation of the silver. The remaining silver iodide was removed by rinsing it with a strong salt solution. A positive image become visible by holding this daguri type in oblique light against a dark background. So, so that the amalgamated silver zones appeared bright and silver plate appeared dark. Photographic film was made up of nitrocellulose strip. Many layers of silver iodide were also coated, each layer with a different dye. Each dye respond to light of certain color only. Now, how an image is formed? Film was media to record image in cameras. Photographic film was discovered in 1727 when John Hendrich Schulz mixed chalk, silver and nitric acid in a flask to make silver nitrate. When this solution was exposed to sunlight, color changed from white to purple. As mentioned above, Louis Degre, after creating a photographic process in which iodine liquid was placed over a silver copper plate and exposed to light. The liquid iodine in the form of emulsion or light reactive chemical and the copper plate became the base for these photographs are called Diogreotypes. Diogreotypes was the wet plate process was little awkward and cumbersome to use. Film placed in a camera has a chemical reactive material that records a fixed image when the film is exposed to light. It is prepared by coating the base with a hot suspension or emulsion of silver salts and allowed it to cool. The light sensitive emulsion basically consists of silver salts grains suspended in gelatin. After this, the gelatin was allowed to dry to form a thin hard layer. The salts used were silver chloride, silver bromide and silver iodide. They could be used individually or in combination. When a light falls on the silver halide particles, some of the light is absorbed at places 
where the silver halide grains are present becomes activated. The activation of some of the silver halide grains in the emulsion produces the latent image. Similarly, the place lacking any silver halide grains do not undergo any light absorption which leads to the formation of latent image when exposed to daylight. The latent image was not directly visible so it needs to be treated chemically before it can be exposed to light, viewed and preserved. This step of the process is known as development. Now the development of the film. The following items are required to develop the photographic film. First, exposed film rolls. Second, developing tank. Third, thermometer. Fourth, scissors to cut film roll from the cassette. Fifth, can opener. Sixth, developing solution. Seven, fixing solution. Eight, hypo cleaning solution. Nine, beaker or measuring cap. Ten, containers to make chemicals. Eleven, negative carriers. After collecting all the required accessories, developing and fixing solutions are prepared. The photographic film has to be developed with developers' chemicals diluted with water as per instructions. The developers act on the activated silver halide grains and further reduces them to metallic silver leaving an exposed part unchanged. Thus the exposed part appears black and the unexposed part appears white or grey. The contrast between these two types of particles form the silver image. Expose the film to the intense light, convert all the remaining silver halide to silver. To develop permanent image, it should be fixed with photographic fixer solution mixed with hypo solution as per instruction mentioned. It dissolves halides and remove it from the emulsion without affecting the silver. Then the fixer is thoroughly washed out of the film so that no traces of fixers are left before the film is dried. Now the image becomes permanent. Commonly used fixer is sodium thiosulfate. After removing it, negatives are handed in a clean, dust-free area so that nobody touches the negatives with dry fingers but wet your hands in solution and lightly run fingers along the drying film to remove excess water. Negatives will be ready to be used at least after two hours again. Now development of the film as a positive. The photographic negative is directly converted to positive by bleaching rather than fixing it. In the bleaching step, a chemical is used to dissolve the silver grains and remove them from the emulsion leaving the silver halide behind. The areas which have silver appear transparent after this treatment. In the next step, the remaining silver halide is exposed to light to activate it so that it can be developed to yield a dark silver image in the areas that receive no light during the original exposure. Hence a positive transparency is formed. Now printing. The most common means of producing photographic positive is through printing. Printing is much like re-photographing the negative. Since the second photographic process produces a negative of the negative, the result is positive. The simplest printing process is containing printing. Here the negative is placed in contact with an unexposed light sensitive material such as a film or an emulsion coated paper as the first step in producing a contact print. The light sensitive material is then exposed by shining light through the negative. The areas that receive the light are those that lie under the clear areas of the negative. These appear as the darker area in the print and corresponds to the darker areas in the original subject. The exposed material results in process which forms a positive. To have comparatively bigger image and the process is called enlarging magnification is used. Here the negative is placed in a special projector known as the enlarger. The enlarged image of the negative is projected onto a piece of sensitive material such as a photographic paper which is then developed to produce a print. A selection of printing papers is available in different contrast grades. This allows the photographer to control the contrast during printing. Additional control of contrast is possible by careful selection of exposure and development time during printing. A nearly infinite number of combinations of exposures and development times can be used to produce an image of normal density in the print. However, the contrast can vary markedly depending on the particular combination used. In general, short exposure times coupled with longer development times result in increased contrast, whereas longer exposures and shorter development times 
produces the opposite effect. The use of this means of controlling contrast coupled with the use of different strength developers and the ability of a selection of a paper with different contrast grades provide the photographer with the means of controlling contrast over a considerable range. Now, modern photography. Photography nowadays uses cameras containing arrays of electronic photo detectors to capture image focused by a lens. Two major types of image sensors used nowadays are CMOs and CCD. Sensors are performing the similar function as we done by the film in earlier days. In the sense that like film, the sensor is exposed to light that comes through the lens and records that exposure. The exposure is then processed and saved to flash memory, generally an SD or compact flash card. The caliber and size of the sensor are also very important as these things significantly impact the quality of photos. Now, application of photography to different crime scenes. A. Purpose of crime scene photography. In this, the first point is one of the best means to record crime scene. Second, to record the original scene which means exact location of crime scene and related areas. Third, to record the initial appearance and exact location of physical evidence at the crime scene. Fourth, to record the point of entry. Fifth, recognized and marked evidences can be photographed first before the collection process starts. Sixth, it will provide investigators and others with permanent visual record of the whole crime scene for later use in the investigation. Seventh, photographs are also produced in court trials and hearings to authenticate the verbal statements. Eighth, in case of accident scene, the photographs should be clicked to fix the location where accident took place, registration number of the vehicle involved and other marks which can be useful in finding the cause of accident. Nine, all the close photographs must be taken by putting at least one scale if not two. 10. If possible, two or three photographs of the viewer must be taken. 11. To record the point of exit. 12. Vehicle used to reach and get away from the crime scene. 13. Track marks if any. Now B. Admissibility of photographic evidence. The photographs must qualify the following major points to be admitted by the court of law. In this, the first point is. Photographs of the objects must be material or relevant to the point of issue. Second, the close-up photograph must be taken by putting one or two scale and should not appeal to the emotion or trend to prejudice the court of jury. Third, there shouldn't be any adulteration, distortion and not misrepresent the scene of the photograph or the object it purports to reproduce. Fourth, there shouldn't be any alteration in the photographs. Now, photographic specific crime scenes. Each and every crime scene is unique and has unique characteristics. So, different types of photographs are required for different crime scenes and they are always decided by the investigator present at the crime scene and based on his experience. Different crime scenes and the types of photographs required have been discussed as follows. Now, homicide. In this, the first point is use color photographs. Second, photographs, example, homicide inside a residence. In this, the first point is exterior of the building. Second, evidence outside the building. Third, entrance into the scene. Fourth, room in which the body was found. Fifth, adjoining rooms, hallways, stairwells. Six, body from five angles. Seven, close up of body wounds. Eight, weapons. Nine, trace evidence. 10. Signs of activity prior to the homicide. 11. Evidence of struggle. 12. View from position witness had at time of the witness. 13. Autopsy. Now, suicide or other dead body. If there is any doubt, photograph the scene as a homicide and the marks pointing towards the suicide may be included. Now, in burglaries. First point is photographs, residential or commercial burglaries. In this, A. Exterior of building, B. Point of entry, C. Entrance into scene, D. Interior views, E. Areas from which valuable articles were removed, F. Damage to locks, safe, doors, tool marks, G. Articles or tools left at the scene by the suspect, H. 
trace evidence, eye, other physical evidences such as tool marks, etc. Now in assault cases and injuries, photographing injuries, face of victim in the photographs, bruises, bite marks in this orientation shot, close up at 90 degree angle to avoid distortion, ruler in some plane as bite marks, focus carefully, bracket exposures. Second is equipment, in this the first point is always use color film and no filter. B. Use color charts and rulers. C. Flash units with diffused lightings. Now in the case of traffic accidents and hit and run cases, in this the first point is photograph at the accident scene. In this A. Where the vehicle came to rest and its position. Photographs should show the relationship of every vehicle with each other. In this B. Damage to vehicle. Technical photographs of damage to a vehicle. Second, do not take any oblique or corner photographs to show damage for reconstruction purpose because they are not aligned with the axis of the vehicle. They tend to conceal the amount and direction of the damage. Next point, take six photographs. Take one of each end of the vehicle straight on. If possible, take one more from overhead. Next point, use electronic flash to fill in shadows within the damage. Next point, debris or marks on the roadway. Next, view each driver had approaching the key point of the accident. Next, view from the point a witness observed the accident at witness eye level. Now, in the case of sexual assault cases, photograph the scene. Next, record the location of the crime scene. Then, record the type and location of the vehicle used to reach crime scene. Then next, record the exact position of the articles including the furniture. Then next, photograph the point of entry and other evidences like foot or footwear prints. Next point is, photograph the point of exit and other evidences like foot or footwear prints. Next, then recording of position and location of the stains of blood, semen and pubic hairs etc. Next point is, undergarments or clothes and condoms etc if present. Next point is recording of semen stains with UV photography. Now in the case of bride burning cases, in this you should first photograph the scene, then record the location of the crime scene, then record the type and location of the vehicle if used to reach crime scene, record the exact position of the articles including the furniture, then Photograph the point of entry and other evidences like foot or footwear print. Then photograph the point of exit and other evidences like foot or footwear prints. Then recording of position and location of the stains of blood and hair etc. should be done. Next point, if the original position and location of the body if available. Next, recording of the shoot or signs of burning. Next, type of accelerant used. Next sign of struggle. Next, container used to bring accidents if available. Now in the arson case, first photograph the scene, then record the location of the crime scene, then record the type and location of the vehicle if used to reach crime scene, then find exact point of origin, type of accident used, then container used to bring accidents if available, then match stick, lighter etc if available, then record the exact position of the articles including the furniture, then photograph the point of entry and other evidences like foot or footwear print, then photograph the point of exit and other evidences like foot or footwear print. Now recording of positions and locations of the stains of blood and hair etc. Then original position and location of the body if available, then recording of the shoot or signs of burning. Now summary. In photographic chemistry, the photographic film and paper was treated with the chemicals after exposing them to light to produce a negative and positive image. This chemical processing transformed the latent image into a permanent visible image. Now, photographic film was made up of nitrocellulose strip. Many layers of silver iodine was also coated, each layer with a different dye. Each dye responds to light of a certain color only. The photographic negative is directly converted 
to positive by bleaching rather than fixing it. In the bleaching step, a chemical is used which dissolves the silver grains and removes them from the emulsion leaving the silver halide behind. The areas which have silver appear transparent after this treatment. The most common mean of producing photographic positives is through printing. Printing is much like re-photographing the negative. Since the second photographic process produces a negative of the negative, the result is a positive. Now, each and every crime scene is unique and has unique characteristics. So, different type of photographs are required for different crime scenes and these are always decided by the investigator present at the crime scene and based on his experience.